lot of discussion about this at the TAM board over the last year to year and a half. And they recommended and we agreed to have a, a public workshop uh, in order to hear from you. Uh, ramp metering is common around the Bay Area. Uh, it's not meant to make things worse. It's intended and operates to make things better. And that's what we want to be able to explain to you here this evening. We have a lot of congestion in our surveys and polling that we do on a regular basis. The congestion on Highway 101 is a number one, by far, complaint and a request to deal with it. So this project, along with our Richmond Bridge project, is meant to address congestion on 101 in Marin. So with that brief introduction, I would like to introduce our first presenter. His name is Andrew Vermeer. He's a deputy director with the Metropolitan Transportation Commission and also lead staff with the Bay Area Toll Authority. His uh, branch of uh, government, uh, regional government, is supporting this project and the Richmond Bridge third lane and bikeway as well. I would ask all of you to be patient and let our presenters present and hold your questions and we will have plenty of time following the presentations for you to ask questions. Uh, we've got several members of the TAM board here this evening as well who are interested in hearing and understanding your concerns. And uh, with that, I'll step aside and let uh, Andy begin the show. Uh, thank you, Diane. Um, I guess, I don't know if you're supposed to announce this or not, but I am actually a Marin resident. I live in San Anselmo, so uh, the conversation that we're having certainly interests me directly. And uh, it's really nice to be here on this beautiful evening, soaking up the wonderful rain. I like to see that. So what I'd like to do is walk through real quick about 10 slides that talk about our approach to um, really doing our best effort at relieving congestion. Um, I, I think you need to point out one thing clearly. The Bay Area is not building a whole lot of new lanes. It's just not practical for a lot of reasons. And so what we're really trying to do is finish out the existing high occupancy vehicle network and then figure out how to put improvements that are more operational in nature and ramp metering uh, we believe is one of those most effective tools. So if I could uh, get Vanna to move to the next slide. Um, this slide is really not going to tell you anything that you don't know um, but the point of the slide is to really point out what we have seen um, on the 101 corridor through Central Marin um, over the last handful of years. So what we see is uh, the traffic congestion increased uh, significantly before the gap closure was built uh, through Central San Rafael. It improved quite a bit along with the economy once it opened, but what you see on the far right part of the graph is an extreme acceleration of congestion heading right back towards where it was uh, before that series of projects was completed. We do um, believe, and I think everybody understands, it's tied to the economy, and it's also tied to the fact that at the end of the line, uh, you lose that lane up in Novato, and until the narrows are completed, you really don't have an opportunity to do much with that capacity because it just bottlenecks at that point. When we look at congestion and managing it, we look at it from a regional perspective and we deal with corridors and the corridors are long. Um, so as far as our analysis is concerned, you really are thinking of the corridor both north and south from the Golden Gate Bridge up in and through Sonoma. Um, but as Diane mentioned, the Richmond San Rafael Bridge is also a key element. And so what this map is designed to tell you is the projects that we are considering uh, going into play in our analysis. So we have continued work going on in the Marin Sonoma Narrows. Um, we do have a significant ramp metering project that we think is important to work uh, in conjunction with the work on the 580 San Rafael Bridge. And so we know there's not much happening with the Green Bray interchange. Um, that money has been moved to the Smart Corridor. 
and uh, we look at this host of projects as being either complete or will be completed during the life of our program. There's been a lot of conversation, uh, particularly in the IJ, about the operational improvements on the Richmond Santa Fe Bridge, and I just want to kind of point out a couple of things. One is the assumption that it's just a painting project uh, where we can just realign the stripes is actually a myth, and I'm not sure where that started from. Right and um, there are three components to the project that we're working on. So the idea is to provide bike and ped access on the upper deck um, from Point Melati across to uh, the Marin side near San Quentin. We're in conjunction with that, uh, coordinating the effort to get the third lane on the lower deck back open during the evening peaks, and I know those peaks also end up in the weekends, so we're open to trying to deal with it during all the peaks that we've identified. And um, I, the, my point with it being more than a striping job is a couple of things. One is it's a capacity increasing project. It is giving direct access from Sir Francis Drake across the third lane into Point Richmond. There is a significant design exception that would be required on the Richmond side that may or may not require uh, touching a retaining wall on that uh, end. And so we have foundations to deal with for sign structures. There's infrastructure that needs to be put on the bridge. More importantly, there are shoulders that are not built for live traffic. And I honestly can't tell you what the original alignment was when it operated as three lanes, but 580 has changed since that point, and it's not traditional to build shoulder lanes to full traffic width depths, uh, traffic depths. Um, in addition to that, there's a considerable amount of environmental clearance that's required uh, by both NEPA and CEQA. And uh, we also have to do significant traffic studies to make sure we understand what's happening when the traffic gets off into Contra Costa. So there's a combination of items there that really make the long tent pole the, the delivery of that project. Um, we also have to deal with the fact that bikes do have access on the Contra Costa side today. Um, while it's not desirable, uh, they are allowed to be on the shoulders in each uh, the western and eastern directions. And so we're working at trying to get them separated behind a barrier on the uh, Contra Costa side in the westbound direction. The one thing I can say is that Caltrans, TAM, and MTC are dedicated to delivering the projects as quickly as possible under any pace. So the environmental process for the bike is not controlling. Right now the environmental process for the third lane is controlling. Um, the bike path itself is really going to be a binary question. Caltrans is either going to agree to let us do it or they're not. At the point that that decision is made, which we're trying to get that decision made very quickly by the end of this calendar year or soon thereafter, we'll be able to really decide on the, the duration of time that's associated with that project separately from uh, the shoulder lanes. When it comes to the shoulder lanes, we now currently think uh, when you go through the normal process that we wouldn't start construction until mid-2017, and I don't think that's acceptable to anybody in this room or any of the agencies that are trying to deliver it. So we'll work very closely with Caltrans uh, to try to figure out ways to bring that project in sooner because we do think it's an important piece of the puzzle to helping congestion that is significant. Um, I will assure you, though, that none of these projects that we're talking about are going to relieve congestion. They will only assist in making the traffic move a little bit better. So let me move in then to the improvements along Marin 101. In our regional transportation plan, which is one of MTC's primary responsibilities, we um, have committed to what we call a freeway performance initiative. And we did it in the last plan, and we have embarked on delivering a whole series of ramp metering projects around the Bay Area, and tying that to improvements in the uh, traffic management systems associated with the cameras and travel times and some of the work that we do with the traffic management center at Caltrans. We uh, couple them with incident management and uh, 511, which is a traveler information. Uh, we also work very closely with the cities and try to help in some of the arterial movement. So the arterials are the roads like uh, Sir Francis Drake and some of the major arterials that dump into the freeway system. 
Um, we've been very successful in delivering that program and we have seen significant results around the Bay Area uh, with just this relatively inexpensive uh, miter sets of improvements on the system. We think that they can be um, delivered very quickly and we have shown that um, throughout the region and we've also been very opportunistic. So when money shows up, and we've been very lucky with some Tiger Grant savings and some other monies to have worked with Caltrans to have a bunch of shelf-ready projects that we can get on the street um, in the event new money uh, is, is uh, shown up. So we are currently working and have opened up some uh, of these ramp metering projects on Solano 80 uh, in Alameda down at the, <coughs> excuse me, 92880 interchange. We've recently turned some on in Sonoma uh, through Santa Rosa and uh, San Mateo on 101. The next group of projects, we're working with the VTA down in Santa Clara on Route 85. There's more work to be done in Solano on Interstate 80 and also in San Mateo 101. So that in combination with the work that we're going to be talking about here um, on Marin 101 is sort of the next slate of projects for us. So the basic question that people always have is what does ramp metering do? The, the basic idea is you put in infrastructure, which is a red light, green light at the end of the ramp that uh, limits the amount of cars that can actually enter into the freeway. Uh, it does that through loop detectors, so it knows when there's a car over it, and it guides its movement based on that. However, one thing that is very important to mention is there's also loop detectors at the end of the ramp as it reaches the local street or the arterial that's attaching to it. And so if the queue extends too long, it starts to override the ramp metering decisions that are made uh, from the sort of natural cycle. And the game plan with it is really just sort of to break up what we call vehicle pl platoons and allows the more free flow of uh, steady state on the main line and then more managed um, inclusion of vehicles into that platoon by sequencing when they enter. Um, we have shown, and uh, I think it's been proven to be a very reliable tool for giving more consistent travel times through uh, an area of congestion. And it essentially just sort of helps smooth out that flow. I mean, everybody has experienced when traffic backs up quickly, you see a residual effect, and this is really designed to try to eliminate those ripples and keep it much more uh, laminar, to use a, a, a water term. So what is the project that we're talking about? Um, one of the things that we decided to do in conjunction with TAM and with Caltrans is to break up a bigger project which was going to deal with ramp metering both in the north and southbound directions and take advantage of the Bay Area Toll Authority's investment in the third lane on the Richmond Bridge and deal with that whole corridor as a suite of projects and we're going to try to get them in a similar delivery time frame. So what we're talking about now is a more manageable project in terms of being ready for available funding, and it will deal with all of the ramps northbound from about Richardson Bay Bridge uh, up through central San Rafael. And the idea is to help us smooth out that flow uh, as one area of helping um, relieve some of the congestion heading towards that San Rafael Bridge. So each of the interchanges that are affected all the way up and down the line are part of the study and uh, the design. And if we are successful in working with Caltrans to develop and find some of the capital funding, our plan is to activate the meters in early 2016 as this first phase of uh, projects. We're currently in the design phase. Oh, so that's not the, uh, the slide that you said is dead is unfortunate, Bill. <laughs> the one before it is where I'm at, and I'm going to have to vamp. Um, <clears throat> so what we have done is, and we do this everywhere we're anticipating putting uh, ramp metering in, is we do what is first called a feasibility assessment. And we work with the local traffic engineers. We work with the state 
and um, we take a look at a focused area. And so we focused uh, our investigation on the eight interchanges um, from Bridgeway to Sir Francis Drake. We take a look at traffic conditions primarily during the peak periods, and we then try to analyze what we think the ramp metering improvements might do. Now, when you see the bar charts that are not here, um, but I'm sure we'll work with Tam to figure out how to get it on their website, and we'll put it on our website also, um, and provide copies uh, to make it a little bit more clear, you don't see a great change in traffic patterns, either for the time it takes someone to get from the ramp to the freeway or the main line during, say, the 4 o'clock hour in the afternoon peak because the capacity is shot. There's just not much you can do at that point. So we think we will save in the order of a minute and a half or something like that, and uh, obviously that's not a dramatic improvement. But where we start to see the benefit is further on into the peaks uh, or past the peaks into the shoulders of the commute. And so we think that by 5 o'clock, you start to see a four or five minute benefit. And it starts to, you know, at least give you a little bit of an improvement for what we think is, um, you know, a, a very small investment. Once we get through the feasibility studies, that makes us decide that that's a good area to do the design work. We then go through the design effort, which again involves environmental processes and a lot more in-depth traffic analysis. But before we move into actually turning the system on, we work on an implementation plan. And that's where we work directly with the local community and TAM and Caltrans to kind of go over the, the operational assumptions and the kinds of things that we will do to monitor how it's working and adjust it and change the phasing as necessary. And uh, just as a reminder, the ramp metering is smart enough to know when the queues are extending back towards the local street, and it starts to override um, at that point because you've hit that sort of congestion point that you really can't manage um, beyond that point. So, uh, the last couple of slides here are going to point to a couple areas that are, uh, I would say, close to Marin and have a lot of similarities. So we have just recently opened up uh, the Solano I-80 Phase 1 uh, in February of 2014, and it was uh, about a nine-month process to get through the implementation plan. So after it was designed and started construction, it still took about nine months uh, to get everybody comfortable with what we were doing. We develop what we call a ramp metering technical committee that includes Public Works, Congestion Management Agency, MTC and TAM, and go over those parameters. We do a lot more detailed modeling and calibration to make sure that our assumptions uh, play out. We would like to continue to streamline that process, though, because we think that's nine months that go by where a very tried and true effort um, that, that shows improvements, um, we, we would like to see improving that timeline. I'll point to the Sonoma Corridor where we've gone through um, Central Santa Rosa, and unfortunately that was an 11-month process. So you can see there's a lot of debate and give and take as we move through that. And uh, we are hoping that by having conversations like this tonight and continued effort, of the discussion and making sure people understand what we're doing, that we can uh, do these things a little bit more efficiently. So in conclusion, um, we are starting in process in, it, well, we're, we're moving together with the design and developing the plans in the first quarter of 2015, where we're kicking off this ramp metering technical advisory committee with the public works folks. Um, and over the course of 2015, we'll continue to put that effort on. And uh, we also do monitor the effect after the work is completed. So the ramps that I mentioned in Sonoma and in Fairfield, we continue to monitor. Um, and I would like to maybe close with one overlay, is we are trying to get smarter in the technology. This ramp metering technology is already decades old. And what we're seeing with the advent of a lot more smarter controller systems, that adaptive meters, which actually respond to the conditions that are live, are sort of the next phase. And so we're hoping that in the future, as we develop more of these, they become smarter, they can deal with incidents, as opposed to just standard time of day congestion. And so we do look forward to working with the region, working with the county, 
uh, and the local cities to get through the process, and, and we believe that we'll be successful. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Uh, our next speaker is going to add a bit more detail to some of what you've heard from Andy. I'd like to have him go ahead and do his brief presentation, and then we'll open it up for questions and comments and provide as many answers as we can this evening. So I'd like to introduce uh, Dan McElhaney who's right behind me here. He's the Chief Deputy Director of Caltrans in the Nine County Bay Area. He handles uh, quite a few projects all over the Bay. Some of you uh, may remember him. He was a regular participant in our Green Bay Corridor Working Group process from February through September of 2013. So we welcome Dan back to Marin. He's got several technical folks here this evening to help with questions as well. And uh, I'll let Dan go ahead and, and add to this discussion with a little more detail. Dan. Thank you, Diane. Uh, it is great to be back. I appreciate the board members here tonight uh, asking us to come back as part of this effort. And I do want to recognize Alan Chow, who's my regional chief for traffic systems focused on ramp meters. And Lester Lee is here also, who's a senior transportation engineer electrical focused on the ramp metering in Marin County. So we are uh, ready for questions and some of the details that, that you may be asking. So if, if I may, I'll go ahead and uh, just look over the, the region again to supplement what Andy was showing. Bill. Uh, we do have a ramp metering plan for the region that uh, working with TAM from Marin County, but Caltrans and MTC, as Andy mentioned, uh, really does have a master plan that gives us an opportunity as a communities, as local agencies, as regional agencies, uh, to see where we're at and where we can go to help affect congestion relief and safety on our current system. Overall here in the Bay Area, uh, this is just a comparison on how many lane miles and other features like bridges and culverts that we have statewide on the state highway system in the Bay Area in Marin County uh, with over uh, 342 lane miles total in Marin County and 228 bridges. We are looking at uh, up to um, 59 ramp meter locations in the phase one, phase two, and overall study in Marin County. Taking another look at the freeway congestion numbers, uh, overall, this is from 2004 to 2014 in the Bay Area. Uh, that left scale is daily vehicle hours of delay times 1,000. So uh, this is a trend chart, and congestion is back with us again. The, the, uh, the Great Depression of the century is already, uh, the recovery is seen in the congestion. I know many of you have seen it throughout all the counties. This pie chart tries to indicate by county the share of that overall delay, and, and Marin is in that upfront green. Uh, green's a good color for here we are in Mill Valley. Uh, and it uh, shows 4% of the overall congestion factor. So that's just where we are, are, are as a county. And then this, uh, we've looked at the bottleneck locations, and these bottleneck locations, uh, we'll make this PowerPoint available for your detail later, but to be able to be sure that when we're studying which ramps and how the ramps may affect us, we need to have the traffic information. And this shows uh, overall uh, data where total delay is, is highest when we're in the Larkspur area going uh, northbound and in Corte Madera. I don't think these are any surprises to us. Uh, Novato, uh, southbound at Novato 101, San Rafael. So total delay vehicle hours is a good indicator to us um, as a community, as, as the traffic engineers recommend, uh, to see where we're at and how that congestion continues to build. And that's some of the, the background data that's important to us as we advise the decision makers on investment for congestion relief. And here's, an, here's another look at it, average an, annual average daily traffic uh, for District 4, we have over 106 thousand incidents of traffic accidents uh, in a th on a three-year average. Uh, Marin County, 5,000 incidents. 101 in Marin County has over 4,200 traffic incidents. Traffic accidents are a very important factor in congestion and being ready to uh, address those. And ramp metering 
can help, as Andy mentioned, platooning the traffic is, uh, is as, as you've been on ramps without ramp metering and you're in a congested area, you know that if two or three cars hit the main line at the same time, there can be confusion and ramp metering gives an opportunity to spread those cars out and, and affect the accident rate. So we want to understand that our traffic volumes are high and that our accident rates, how can we uh, impress on those change? One more overall visionary, the mobility now. It's not just about ramp metering, of course, in the region with the express lanes as a, a major uh, program as we look for congestion relief there, operational improvements, some of the ramps that are part of this first phase proposal for Marin County includes uh, ramp improvements in order to help address uh, whether it's a one lane or a two lane ramp for HOV bypass. Uh, and then we have some smart corridor opportunities in other counties to help with that congestion relief overall. The, the, the uh, traffic operations system includes ramp metering. With this, this the last column shows the Marin County total build out of some of the other elements such as closed circuit television cameras, vehicle detection stations to help us understand where the volumes are, uh, changeable message signs to communicate with drivers on a regular basis, uh, highway advisory ra radio when there's some emergencies, uh, extinguishable mes message signs, those are the ones that aren't overhead but that are focused on a single message. These are elements that are beyond just the ramp metering that helps us communicate with the drivers uh, in part of our operations system. So to go through the ramp metering and supplement what uh, Andy said, I wanted to emphasize, Bill, if you can go another two slides. Again, the signals regulate traffic to enhance safety and mobility. Uh, these traffic signals provide us an opportunity for safety by eliminating those conflicting traffic movements on mainline. And as, as Andy mentioned, it's very important because the question comes to me a lot is if we have a short ramp or if we have congestion back on the city street, how do we work through that? And we, we have the system set up to either speed up the signal timing as, they, as the uh, loop detectors indicate that vehicles are queuing up on the ramp. Uh, so typically a red signal is up to 15 seconds. That can be sped up to like f a four second cycle and that helps move the vehicles along on an automated system. And we've, we've talked about, and I, I do want to say there's some nice handouts on the back table that highlight the benefits of ramp metering. But in the end, in the long run, where we've seen elsewhere in the district is the reliability as drivers can expect their commute benefits of ramp metering. Uh, they get used to uh, seeing that red light at the end of the ramp is always a difficult thing to do at first, but once you get into the system and understand the timing of it, uh, the benefits of being able to avoid the platooning uh, really, really helps the drivers. This is a simple schematic of the ramp meeting hardware, and you can see at the uh, upper right, that end of queue loop is very important, and if, if you go back to our original systems years ago, uh, either that, that wasn't installed or it wasn't always working as well from an engineering perspective, um, and that's, that's a, a great benefit. Sometimes we install ramp metering as a project comes through. Maybe the project only does a mile segment of work on the Highway 101. So we have ramp meters now that are currently out there that are not on, and you may have seen those uh, for the region and, and with MTC and Caltrans. We're, we're making sure that we're doing all we can to finish that corridor approach because you want a, a section of the corridor with enough ramps metered in order to provide that consistency for the congestion relief. Elsewhere in the Bay Area, uh, this is a list of counties and route, just those first few, San Mateo 101, Alameda 580, and San Mateo 280. Some of the, the ramp metering benefits in general are reduction in travel time of up to 50%, uh, particularly in the Hillsdale University. So reduction in travel time and reduction of duration of peak hours, something Alan and Lester keep an eye on with our systems is 
when does that peak hour uh, period for commuters, is it two hours long, two and a half hours long, three hours long? The, the possibilities for ramp metering, uh, reducing that overall uh, commute congestion time is also an important factor and a benefit of ramp metering. A couple more st uh, case studies. Uh, the, the, this is on in Alameda County on 580 with the ramp metering benefits there. Uh, phase one was hop, hop yard on ramp to Santa Rita. I'm not sure everybody's familiar with that, but we did see a 20% a change in total accidents as a benefit of the installation of the ramp meters and implementing ramp meters in phase two was Foothill on-ramp to Greenville, overall a 25 percent. And, and that's, that's truly a, a positive. Uh, we, we're not going to predict where we're at in Marin County on that, but overall the ramp metering benefits as uh, with your consensus move forward with the ramp metering. Uh, the benefits for accidents is there and, and that's a, these are some real stats from the recent 580 quarter. Take a few more minutes and talk about ramp metering, supplement Andy's presentation. Uh, I asked uh, the group to put together where we're at in the phasing, and here you can see in blue uh, where some ramp metering has already been installed and working with Diane and Andy, we're going to do our best uh, in this first phase to address that and finish the phase two environmental to be sure that uh, overall the 101 ramp metering stay on schedule and get ready for any potential funding. On the next slide, phase one, which is outlined in these presentations, which is from uh, Golden Gate Bridge to Sir Francis Drake, 10 ramp metering and the various TOS elements is eight and a half million dollar capital cost uh, to go uh, to the county line. Uh, we want to uh, find a way that to find uh, funding of about 40 million in capital cost current estimate. That's the phase two, which includes the locations that are inactive on the quarter now. So again, with Diane and her team's help, we've been able to get the phase one project to 65% uh, uh, finished plans, which we can talk more about if you have questions on that. And on the next slide, it, it does uh, indicate the locations where those phase one whether it's a diagonal ramp or a connector ramp uh, from Spencer to Sir Francis Drake and uh, being able to uh, address not only the uh, mixed flow lanes but the potential for carpool lanes. And we are on track for beginning construction in 2016 and activation in 2016. Overall, like I said, I really Appreciate this handout, Stuck in Marin County Traffic, that TAM staff put together. Talks about what causes congestion, has a nice solution ramp metering, talks about less congestion, fewer accidents, and it does have a how ramp metering works with the end of Q sensor diagram that I wanted to point out to you if you hadn't seen that, and the schedule on the back of, of phase one. So TAM staff did a nice job with that uh, trifold handout. So thank you, look forward to your questions. Okay, I'm going to ask our speakers to come sit up here at the table, and I'm going to invite anybody that might want to ask questions or make comments to come up to the microphone. You know, we're, this isn't a formal public hearing, but uh, we, we probably have 20 minutes, half an hour. I would ask you to uh, try and uh, be as direct and brief as possible. And we really here, are here this evening with a chance for some exchange. And so we will do our best to answer your questions. Uh, we're recording this. We'll have the PowerPoints on our website tomorrow. We'll have the video on our website as well. Uh, we're going to be taking note of all your questions and, and enhancing our question and answer documents also to be put on the website, and we'll try and do that as quickly as possible. So again, welcome, and uh, I'd like you to definitely state your name, and uh, we'll do our best to answer your question.
Hi, my name is Bill Tunney. I live down in this area um, in Strawberry. Um, and I have a few questions. I'm going to make it, try to make it for three minutes because I've been scolded for not doing that in the past. Um, but I'm wondering why we are here. Uh, the question came to my mind is, are we here to discuss the acceptability of metering to the local residents or simply here to hear about what MTC and Caltrans has already decided to do? I don't know if there's a possibility that it will change its plan based on what the community would prefer. A second question is, why is the mission of Caltrans to solve the traffic travel time in the corridor? The corridor from Sausalito up to Santa Rosa is what, we, what is being discussed. But Marin is different. It's not one solid corridor like Interstate 80 over in the East Bay or 101 south of San Francisco. I have many times gone out on the freeway heading north um, from Tiburon Boulevard, and it's just a nightmare. It's backed bumper to bumper until you get to the 580 Richmond Bridge on ramps. And from there, up until Highway 37, which is where I turn off, we're going 70, 75 miles an hour, and we're going faster than that because we want to get there before the next traffic jam starts. So to analyze this entire corridor and not take account into account the effects that each on-ramp that's metered will have on the surrounding neighborhoods, to me, is a mistake. And that's why I think you will find the people in Mill Valley and Tiburon and Strawberry are going to be against metering if it will slow down one car one second in our local uh, traffic area. It's really, uh, that hasn't been talked about tonight. Why, is, why are we not discussing what happens in, in all of our neighborhoods? The traffic on Blythdale and Tiburon Boulevard uh, can be just unbelievable. And if people are further delayed by the metering ramps, then we are going to be upset. Well, you say, okay, if, it gets to, if the queue stacks up a little bit, the metering ramp goes green. Well, then what's the metering ramp there for? It's, you know, maybe I don't understand metering ramps in traffic, but I do understand some, some about a traffic and maybe we could be educated on that. But what I've heard so far is, is, is there's nothing been discussed about the impact it'll have on the local neighborhoods. And either there's no impact or the mission to analyze the corridor is, is mistaken. I, I made some, I'll, I'll just be quickly quick here. Um, the big the bottleneck here in Marin, if you said, if, the, if MTC and Caltrans said, okay, we want to go ahead with our project, but the on-ramps here um, at Tiburon Boulevard and 101, uh, we'd like to put in the extra lanes, but we were just kidding about the metering. We'll let you have some extra lanes, and we could get on the freeway quicker, maybe, uh, but it would certainly not back up and queue into our local neighborhoods. If we could get that, if we could talk Caltrans into doing that, I think you would get some support from the local community. Um, okay, so enough about that. Um, one other thing that I don't believe is in the analysis uh, is that there are a, a potential uh, development in Strawberry of the Baptist Seminary which could put another, uh, there's 1,500 vehicle trips a day coming out of there now, could, will go to probably 5,500, depending on the amount of development, which we are uh, begging for <laughs> some sort of relief on. Uh, 
but I don't think that is, has been considered. So um, I'm going to conclude here that if, if we would, oh, okay, here's my paragraph. May I conclude by saying that over the years, traffic in general never works out the way the engineers said it would. For all the reasons above. I'm sorry? Can you please wrap up so the other people will have an opportunity to talk? Yes, I'm sorry. I, I said I would be quick, but I haven't. Um, okay, well, that's, that's all I have to say. I think to, to get through um, the public input before the TAM meeting, we need to ask you to limit your comments and questions to three minutes. Okay. Thank you. I guess the answer was two lanes with a meter, uh, a, a detector of the traffic that will reduce it to four seconds of red light. Is that correct? Uh, depends on which question you're. Well, the, the, I was going to reiterate the backup in Mill Valley, but if you put two lanes in that circle on ramp, and one of them is not a mm -hmm. carpool lane, I hope, and you have that detector at the beginning of it, okay, from four o'clock to six o'clock in Mill Valley, it will be the four second red light all the time, okay? It's that, it's how, that's how congested it is, and you can save yourself a lot of money by not buying the lights at all. Okay, you can put the two lanes on there, please, but you'll save yourself a lot of money because it'll just be uh, uh, for two hours, four to six, constant uh, uh, four seconds red light, and ideally it would be you know 100% green. Okay, you go on the, tr the freeway there is 20 miles an hour, and you put your uh, lights you're going to do at Mill Valley at least will make it maybe 20 and a half miles an hour. You know, you'll put another, you'll go a wee bit faster. It's so slow going on there. And one of the two reasons I, because I commute every night from Mill Valley to San Rafael, and two, and two of the reasons there's that much congestion is one, well, three years ago, all the East Bay traffic started coming this way, right? So I don't know what happened with the Bay Bridge. Something happened, because they all started at once almost three years ago. Uh, so that's the reason why it's congested so much. But what's happening is that on the slow lane next to the off-ramps to San Francisco, uh, San Francisco Drake and to 580, they're all stopping, trying to cut in to the off-ramp. They stop traffic in the slow lane. And, that, and, and there needs to be a police car behind them or something with a head, head saying to, uh, telling, shouting at them to, to move on, something like that. And the other thing is the carpool lane. They're merging four lanes to get off at the, at the, at the, both of those two exits. So, you know, until you get that two-lane flyover from San Rafael 101 onto 580, which is long overdue, because you ain't going to widen Sir Francis Drake, it sounds like. You've given up on that. Is that correct? So that's the solution now. Two-lane flyover of San Rafael from 101 north onto 580, but until you do that, you're going to have to do something like, like the, maybe they do in uh, Los Angeles, which is a dotted line in the carpool lane where there's only one sp particular place it's where they can exit. And that might be a, 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 a seminary. That might be the place where, it might happen, where they should exit the carpool lane. Um, although the congestion goes all the way back there too. So, you know, that's, that's the only two suggestions I can make at this point until you finally get your fingers out and get those two lane, that two lane flyover if you're not going to do Sir Francis Street widening. Okay, that's your only thing you've got to do now. You've got to focus on that, please. Okay? Can you, can you just talk for a second about um, the effect each ramp has on the local streets and reiterate what the plan is with respect to uh, local street traffic and through movements. Uh, the, the previous gentleman talked a lot about if people are further delayed, this isn't going to be acceptable to the community. Maybe you can talk a little bit about that. 
and then uh, the, kind of reiterate the goal in, in looking at this as a quarter with the ramp metering and the Richmond Bridge. Can you just say something about those? Sure, I'll, I'll start off. Hi again, Dan McElhenney with Caltrans. I, I really do appreciate the input and the questions and the feedback, uh, even beyond ramp metering, which I think was the uh, 580-101 connector, which is something I know that TAM board, uh, Caltrans and MTC are, are also talking about the opportunities there. The, the ramp metering study in, in, in Andy's presentation, sometimes it takes a little longer before a final decision is made on ramp metering because we want to look at the traffic signals, we want to look at the intersections on the local streets with the public works directors, with their technical staff, with their traffic staff uh, to be sure that what's planned or what's possible on those, those on-ramps provide, uh, you know, whether it's a single lane ramp now or if it needs to be widened to accommodate um, the queue of the vehicles or for uh, HOV bypass situations so that the system has an opportunity to provide that ramp metering benefit, which is, you know, 15 seconds or down to four seconds or so, and also look at uh, the length of that queue and the timing of that queue. If, if, you, if you reach the ramp, are you waiting very long at all on the city street? If all that, that uh, last loop I talked about, the, the queue loop, uh, indicates uh, to speed up the signals so cars can continue to get on and clear those intersections quickly. Uh, or to go to full green has been looked at too, so where the, the ramps can clear out. And so the public works director and their technical staffs are very important in that, in that review uh, and to be able to be sure that we're getting the benefit not just for those getting onto the freeway, that, but the local streets are, are still moving uh, without a lot of improvement on the local streets to keep that movement going. So that's very, very important in the ramp metering study that, that comes forward before we implement ramp metering. So that, I think that was at least one of the questions. Um, Andrew from your MTC. Y yeah, I, I, I would just like to add on that there's no silver bullet. There is an awful lot of congestion in Marin. There's an awful lot of congestion around the Bay Area. There's limited transportation funding. Um, and most of the improvements that we are going to be doing are not going to be building more highway capacity. So what we work on with the congestion management agencies and with Caltrans is trying to figure out how to put a suite of improvements together and deal with what we hope are segments of the system that are consistent with what the first gentleman was talking about. So our analysis is very focused on the eight interchanges that come from Richardson Bay Bridge to the Richmond San Rafael Bridge. Independently, they don't do much, but as a group, they do make as much improvement as the ramp metering piece and component of congestion relief can do. Um, we have spent an awful lot of energy and time with Caltrans working on the infrastructure that we talked about briefly that has to do with the changeable message signs and the, and the cameras that are out there that help incident management from uh, the Oakland Traffic Management Center. We work very closely uh, in partnership with the CHP and with Caltrans in the freeway service patrol program that deals with incidents that happen um, because congestion is just as much related to an accident or incidents that take place. We're very supportive of completing the Marin Sonoma Narrows, which we think is another piece of uh, improvement that will stop the bottleneck at the north end of the HOV lane. And it's a combination of those things. But again, there is no silver bullet, and we are paying attention to the impacts associated with the local communities <clears throat> and trying to participate as much as we can in dealing with the arterial uh, traffic management uh, portion of getting people to and from uh, the, the local cities. So uh, we do think in combination this is the best effort that we can put into a very congested and highly impacted uh, state highway system and its arterials. My name is Ann, A-N-N Burke, B-U-R-K-E, and I'm a resident of Tam Valley <coughs> since 1977. Um, I uh, first would like to say, I know we live in the age of consultants and analyzing things and paying hundreds of thousands of dollars, but before all that's done, it might be good to come to the community that lives in an area and ask what they think. We'll give it to you for free. Okay, so it's nice that we're here tonight, but it sounds like your decisions 
have been made and the ball's rolling and it's rolling down on top of us. I don't know if you realize that Tam Valley is F-rated traffic in the community at the junction and that translates into one million cars going through that community, getting on and off of 101. Recently, a few lights were put in. It made it so much worse just to get to the freeway. So I have to say, for my neighborhood, and I know also for Mill Valley, because I live here and I've lived here for many years and seen it get worse and worse, they don't need those lights there either. They are on their own stop and let me get on. They don't need to be stopped anymore so that people don't even, that don't even work here or live here can zoom home quicker. Really, that's my feeling. Thank you. Hi. Uh, <clears throat> I'm David Schoenbrunn, and um, I want to strongly support uh, the implementation of ramp metering as a net benefit to Marin residents. This is not something being, being imposed on residents. It's something that will benefit us by regulating the traffic. What I want to comment on, though, is the institutional failures in getting to this point. MTC is supposed to be a planning agency. So where were you five years ago at a minimum when this should have been initiated? Uh, you did a, uh, uh, an initial study in San Mateo County that proved it was the proof of concept. So why has this taken so long to roll out? You're way behind the curve on implementing ramp metering. As for the Richmond Bridge, I accuse Caltrans of gross mismanagement in terms of failing to monitor the performance of the bridge approaches, the backups to the bridge approaches, and the impacts of those backups on 101. This has been going on for years. It is completely outrageous that it has been allowed to happen with nothing whatsoever being done or said, no studies, no nothing. Um, uh, Based on uh, all the information I've been able to review, I believe the Richmond Bridge is a lane restriping project. There's nothing in writing showing any bigger problems. If there's something internal, it has not been allowed to be seen by the public, and therefore, you have self-created distrust of whatever it is you're planning to do. The biggest problem I see is the callousness of transportation agencies ignoring the plight of people needlessly stuck in traffic where a demonstration project or something, some other strategy could deliver re relief in a very short period of time. I believe there has not been enough emphasis placed on getting this thing done getting it in place and dealing with all of the various constraints on your system, the legalities, the sequa, the this, the that. I believe that that could be handled in a very timely fashion. To me, it is preposterous that this is going to take two years to basically lay down stripes. I mean, that is the principal change that will occur. The signs that will be added could be added later whenever it gets done, but changes could be implemented now. Finally, I want to stress that TAM and MTC's funding priorities are for facilities for single occupant vehicles, which is the very essence of the problem that the Bay Area faces. Strategically, your priorities 
are backwards. They're completely out of touch with the challenges of today, which are congestion and climate change. If you want to modify those things, you have to create alternatives to single occupant driving. Instead, what MTC is, has as its largest funding priority is creating high occupancy toll lanes so that people who drive alone can conveniently get from one place to another. It's exactly opposite to what's needed in this time and place. It's just insane. And so I want to ask that having already given up on MTC as hopeless, I want to ask TAM board members to ask your staff to schedule a strategic rethinking. We really need to change direction because this is not working. Thank you. Didn't hear much of a question. If, if I may, uh, I, I could answer at least one of David's questions. Uh, and I appreciate, I appreciate your comments, David. Uh, we've worked together before. Uh, I guess, first of all, uh, for, for Caltrans, I'd like to throw a compliment to MTC. Uh, the, uh, if you go back five, ten years, and I think David highlighted that, the approach statewide which, by the way, the, the state highway account for distressed roadways and the needs that we have, we're, we're not even at 50% funding versus need. So that's a big problem for us on the, on the state level and being able to you know, bring enough funding, as you all know, to the needs of the system. Uh, but if you go back five, 10 years on the ramp meeting approach was if a new project came out, we will do our best to fund the ramp metering system that eventually when the next segment project comes along, that ramp metering, so it would be built in pieces uh, with the hopes of in the future we will have a program that funds the ramp metering as a corridor. Uh, MTC uh, could see the benefits of looking at it as a corridor and, and really did take the lead in, in uh, that commission and Commissioner Kinsey is a part of that effort over the years to uh, find a way to emphasize the freeway performance initiative. Uh, which when I showed the re reduction in travel times on 101, 580, 280, and some of these heavily congested routes, uh, a lot of that is because the region has invested uh, in that. So we're, we're heading in the right direction. I really appreciate that effort by MTC staff and their commission overall and the, and the TAM board for their leadership as well in that. Uh, on on the, the bridge, I think Andy did a good job earlier talking about uh, the importance of the approach to Richmond San Rafael Bridge and the challenges on the Contra Costa side as we're able to uh, get through the, the area near Chevron and so that traffic has an opportunity to exit on that next ramp and, and merge. Uh, but we, we are in a very fast pace towards those solutions, uh, not as fast as what we would like, uh, but certainly faster uh, than most could probably take it. And that's a big part of that's uh, TAM board leadership as well as working with Contra Costa County. So that wasn't a big part of our presentation tonight, talked about the Richmond San Rafael Bridge, uh, but we, we can talk more if there's time. Um, but both the upper deck and lower deck project are moving forward uh, with the region's leadership. Um, I, I see that one of the commissioners would like to ask a question. I'm, I am going to ask the commission to hold their questions for, for a later time. Um, we are past time to start the TAM Commission meeting. So let's hear from the public. Uh, Clayton Smith, uh, Mill Valley. Uh, I'm reminded in thinking of these infrastructure upgrade uh, delays and whatnot, uh, World War II started in December of 1941, ended in August of 1945. That's 45 months. I don't know what's happened to this country but it's like this country is just in failure mode. And I, I have to blame the bureaucracy, and I have to say that Caltrans um, is just another part of what I see as failure mode. If you were to look at the Holland Tunnel in New York, they're looking at a proposal to build another tunnel there. Uh, if you adjust for inflation, the cost of the Holland Tunnel today would have been $700 million. The proposal is $20 billion. Somehow or another, uh, even adjusted for inflation, we're wildly uh, consuming capital in the most destructive fashion. 
with this laziness on the part of agencies like Caltrans. Uh, my second issue is that um, uh, with the diamond lane fetish that we have out here on the freeway, any fool can see that the greatest problem that faces us moving from here to San Rafael is those diamond lanes. They are a guaranteed traffic jam. And I, I would, uh, if I had the time, I would debate it with you thoroughly. And I think I would find high support in any audience for the idiocy of having that restriction in that terrible area of our roadway uh, to pursue that, uh, that limitation on through traffic and the dangers that it creates for everyone watching those cars go all across four lanes trying to get to the Richmond Bridge issue. Um, and you see in Santa Rosa, when I'm up there frequently, that three o'clock uh, uh, restriction that you have imposed up there has taken what should have been a solution to the problems of traffic and, and actually turned it into the problem itself. You've taken a solution, the extra lane, and you've actually turned it into a nightmare for traffic up there. Um, and I also wanted to address the issue of the sensitivity of Caltrans to local concerns. I don't think very many people, uh, certainly in this community, have any hope that Caltrans is actually going to demonstrate responsiveness, sensitivity, and, and, and least of all, alacrity in dealing with uh, these issues that we face in uh, Southern Marin concerning congestion. And finally, I want to uh, present the fact that, uh, particularly the individual sitting next to me was uh, uh, thinking about and we talked about, this whole thing is about moving cars through Marin this is about the development in Solano County, Can you wrap Napa up, please? County. Yes, I'll wrap it up. I'm sorry that I'm being disputative. I will finish in another Just courtesy two or to three the other sentence. people who want to speak. Yes, I know. Yeah, uh, thank you. I know the people who are wanting to speak, and I want to be courteous too. But I do believe that this problem is originating in the hyper development that's occurring outside of Marin, we are being turned into not exactly a flyby county, but a drive-through county, and it's all at our detriment. And this is not about solving the problems for people in Marin, but it's for solving that problem. It's not for our benefit, truly. Uh, thank you. I, I would like to um, close the, the public I, I workshop like to, after. I, I would like to thank the gentleman for his comments. I Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Go ahead. Well, if you let me finish my sentence, I was going to offer just that. So the lady who is standing will be the last speaker. She's been standing here for a while. All right, then the gentleman in the blue coat will be the last speaker. All right, folks. Good evening, I'm Bruce Corcoran. I live in Strawberry, and excuse the hat, I'm recovering from some minor surgery and my head looks like an old baseball with seams and stitches and a few rough edges, so the hat's much better. Um, look, everyone wants to improve traffic congestion. I'm certainly a proponent to do any, anything we can to improve tra traffic con congestion, but I'm concerned that uh, uh, the engineering theory may not fit the locality and, and the individual neighborhoods. And I think, I think we have to do more studies of what, what the impact of metering lights would be on a particular area. We've heard a lot of good stories about what metering lights have done, the great improvements they've made, but I've also read articles about how metering lights in the East Bay have made traffic even worse. So, we have to be very careful about a one-size-fits-all uh, with metering lights up and down 101. And I'd like to talk about my area in particular, which is the, 
the Seminary Drive uh, northbound exit. Uh, because that area is very constrained, land constrained, there's very little that you can do there. And I noticed in the, in the write-ups here that that's not, there's no plan to uh, increase the, the on-ramp uh, on lanes. There's no room to, I understand that. So what we have right now at PM Peak is we have traffic going northbound, exiting that ramp. Traffic is backing up on 101. People are so desperate to make the left-hand turn on the Redwood Frontage Road that they actually clog the, interchange, the, inter, the intersection so people can't move any, either way. And we have also, we have uh, the development, the Silva Island residential development, which has uh, 60 households in it. Plus we have businesses along the way. We have two uh, gas service stations, a delicatessen, a McDonald's, and uh, uh, we have a 7-Eleven. And traffic is trying to come in and out of those businesses and can't get through the bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic going northbound on the Redwood Frontage Road. My concern is that metering lights may make traffic worse. And I just ask that we really look, at, look very hard at that intersection and others to make sure that we're not compounding problems. That's the last thing we want to do. Thank you very much. Good three minutes. Oops. Hello. Can you hear me? Uh, my name is Elida Doldan Schuchman. I'm from Mill Valley, the city of Mill Valley. Okay. That's good. Fine. Okay, thank you. And uh, what I'd like to say is that I'm really glad to see people from Mill Valley here. I see a couple of council members because I think we have terrible problems in Mill Valley with traffic. And it doesn't start at the, it's not really that it's just as you enter the highway. It is, it starts at Camino Alto and Miller Avenue. That's what it starts. All the traffic starts, you know, con uh, piles on the, on the right-hand side lane and they continue there on Camino Alto they turn on Blysdale, and still they are on the right-hand side because the, the road narrows to one lane. And if you want to go to San Francisco, you have to wait behind those cars as they are trying to go north. And uh, so then what happens is once you get beyond Kipling, what you're going to do is to take the shoulder to go into San Francisco. If you're going to take the highway to go north, then you keep going a little bit farther, but you, take a you get stuck on the way because there is a light beyond the entry, beyond the, the, the round entry into the north, uh, uh, going north, that, that is from the traffic that is exiting 101 into Blaisdell and, and Tiburon Boulevard. So it doesn't matter if you're going to put a light there or what you're going to do, because it's still the cars, the cars going into that curb, the, into the round exit, it's, uh, there are four or five at a time. You don't need a light there. The light is natural because you have the light beyond that's interrupting you. So I think what you need to do is to look at how do you work out that access. There's a conflict because those, those two, they are too close. So one suggestion I would have for you is before you spend all this money, Caltrans had always been so good at doing mock-ups. You know, you can put temporary lights, temporary, temporary signs, anything like that. Just use temporary things for a while. Try them and see what happens. But I think we have some serious problems, not at the highway itself, but we have it in our towns. And I think if you are, have knowledge beyond what our people in our towns like Mill Valley, they have, please come over and offer your help because we need help right now. Thank you. Three minutes, please. No, just okay. Um, you just have a question. Okay. My name is Glenn Greenberg. I live in Ross. Andy, um, I, I was against all this, you know, before I came in, but I'm listening. I want to hear what it's about. So the northbound entrance ramps are already filled any time from 3 o'clock on at Wernham where you go north on Trader Joe's trying to get on the 101 or coming down Sir Francis Drake wanting to go under the freeway and turn left on the 101 or um, at Paradise, or at uh, Tiburon Boulevard, they're already filled. If they're already filled, doesn't that mean that the metering lights will, will become green automatically because it's already filled? So 
uh, so if that's the case, what's the point of the project? And, and if there is a point, seriously, then how does this, what are we missing? How does this help? Right, look, I, I think that's a, a fair question, and I think that is the problem that we're trying to put our arms around. Um, you know, there, there's been a lot of discussion in this corridor just north of here about improvements or not. Um, and frankly, I, I think from a pure traffic standpoint, it would have made more sense to close some of the ramps and not create that additional capacity there and move them to the next full interchange. There's a lot of substandard ramps and part of the same discussion when it comes to laminar flow of the freeway is disrupted by the uh, non-standard separation of various ramps. So th there's a very difficult problem to solve in front of us. There's no question about it. Um, I, I tried to reiterate uh, a couple of things. Congestion's here. We can't solve that problem with the ramp metering, and I am not here to claim that the ramp metering is going to solve the congestion through the corridor. But I do think in combination with the projects that are underway, and I am fully supportive of the gentleman that talked about uh, northbound 101 to 580 connector, because I do think that's a missing element. Um, those are all important pieces, but we're restricted in a lot of ways. Sir Francis Drake will not be widened from the Larkspur Ferry to the bridge, and it's got signals that limit the amount of traffic that can go through there. We have a substantial traffic problem. The ramp metering is one element that we think will help in combination with the other improvements that we've been talking about in terms of completing. If I could also finish, I... That's absolutely available. It's my understanding that we've been working with the Public Works and directly our staffs have been sharing that information, but it's public information and it's, it's certainly to be used for that purpose. So um, I would like to suggest, unless you have more information from us, that, that we close the, the Public Workshop at this time. We're, we're late beginning our Commission meeting. I would like to thank everyone for coming and giving us input. Um, I know you still have questions, and I believe there are, are there cards in the back. There's always an opportunity to simply email and ask your questions. Can we take a three-minute break before yeah, we start? Yeah. No. <laughs> we'll make sure that the uh, PowerPoints, the tape from the meeting, and that feasibility traffic study that was mentioned are all up on our website, most of which will be up there tomorrow.